العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله اون ديسكاس ويز يو ذا ديزيز ويز از لايك اني اذر ديزيز اند هيز ديزيز از لايك ا كانسر ويز از انفكتد ذا سومبا ناو ديز اند هيز ديزيز وي نيد تو اكسبوز بيكوز از ذا كوز فور واي بيبل دونت ونت ديسكاس تكفير or why people have a problem with this uh, with takfir and that disease is known as al irja and i'll explain exactly what irja is but this is the disease which causes the confusion amongst people in deciding whether someone is a muslim or a kafir and obviously as you are probably aware we're talking about the murjia because we've discussed now iman in accordance to the understanding of ahl sunnah wal jamaah and we're clear upon that we give so many evidences it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work all of that out But we need to discuss uh, the roots of irja and murjia and how that has become uh, 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 has affected people nowadays uh, in order for us to stay away from it. And also, we want to discuss about who are the Hawarij, so we don't become like them. Is it really the case that the person who makes takfir that he's from the Hawarij? Can't be the case, because when we discussed about those people who do make takfir, we found out there was a lot: Abu Bakr, Umar, even the angels, even the wives of the Prophet. Yeah, yeah. And when we discussed about those people who don't make takfir, is it only the people who are muhid? No, even the Jews they refuse to make takfir. Remember, I mentioned that the Jews they refuse to make takfir upon the mushrikeen of the Quraysh. So we need to discuss what is uh, irja. Irja it comes from the adverb al arja, al arja, which means to delay something or to exclude something. Yeah. Amongst the juristic scholars, irja it means to take out action. from the name of iman and the one who does this we call this person a murji murji is uh, singular and plural the murjia as a collective body the murjia who separate action from iman so as a result of that they will never call anybody fasik they will say they will say that the person is not fasik and we will not kafir and we will leave that until the day of judgment so they will never call anybody a murtad and they will say we we'll leave it to allah uh, because we believe iman is only inside the heart so anything which is action whether it be from the verbal or whether it be from the physical actions they exclude that from iman and the best way to describe the best way to describe iman as understood by the murjia is basically to say take the quran rip it up go and throw it in the bin swear at allah swear at the nabi do all of the kufr and the shirk bow down to the white house you're a mu'min sounds extreme doesn't it but that's exactly what irja is do whatever you want you don't go outside the fold of islam that is the murjia oh have you got your thing actually now yeah can you unplug that yeah cuz i'm getting i'll explain to you about the origins of the murjia the origins of the murjia they started in the year 4 and 5th hijri and uh, Okay, almost killed me, but sorry. I don't. I won't make that clear. The origins of the Murjia they began in the year fourth uh, and fifth uh, Hijri. And when we discuss about them, we discuss two uh, groups of Murjia. The first, which I've written on the board, is known as the Murjia Gulat. They are known as the extreme Murjia, and these have been uh, been called kafir by the likes of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. by Abi Abid and Waqi Waqi ibn Al-Jara and those origins are come from a number of people these are known as we say murjia gulat we mean the extreme murjia but we mean the juristic murjia these are also known as um, the murjia al-mutakallimun the murjia uh, al-mutakallimun Uh, also you can call them the murjia al fuqaha murjia al fuqaha excuse me no we only call these ones the murjia mutakallimun murjia fuqaha are the ashaira which i'll explain in after i've explained all of these so who are these people now jahan bin safwan he is one of the founders of this school of thought of the murjia and he believed the man is inside only inside the heart as you see what i've done i've drawn on the board where the iman is Heart, saying and actions and here i've written three of the names of the founders of the murjia so you got jahan bin safwan muhammad uh, bin uh, muhammad bin qarar and bishop 
Jahan bin Safwan, from him there came a sect known as the Jahmiya. The Jahmiya, and from Muhammad uh, bin Karam, there is a sect known as the Karamiya. Both of them are Murjiya. Both of them separate action from Iman. What do they differ in though? Jahan bin Safwan, he said, Iman is only inside the heart. Iman is only inside the heart. Whereas Muhammad bin Karam, he's from the uh, Karamiya, uh, and he's a Kafir in fact as well. So there's a bit of tafid for you right here. He's from the Gulag, Murjiya, meaning the extreme Murjiya. What does he say? He said that Iman is only on the sayings. Iman is only on the sayings. Bishop, he agreed and disagreed with both of them. How can that be? How can someone agree and disagree with both of them? He said Iman is on the sayings as well as the actions. Sayings of the heart and the sayings, but not of the actions, excuse me. Now, you have something called the Murjiya Fuqaha. Before I just jump to that, we have something called the Khawarij and the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, which are in between the Murjiya. Khawarij, they believe Iman is on heart, sayings and actions. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Iman is on heart, sayings and actions. However, for the Khawarij, they believe that Iman only increases and it doesn't decrease. That's one little arrow just to show you it increases, but it doesn't decrease. But they believe it can be negated by anything kufr shirk as well as anything sin. So for example, one man was walking in the marketplace, a pig touched his leg. They said, you're a kafir because of that. Literally, they've done that. Mm. He's walking in the marketplace and a pig touched his leg. He said, wait, what's happening? Oh, you just touched my leg by accident. No, you did You're a kafir. You know what I mean? Somebody, he dropped his debts on the floor. Somebody had debts. He said, did you pay for them? He said, no, I thought they were free. They fell from the tree. Kafir, you stole them. This is completely crazy. Yeah? Well, Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, we believe that Iman increases with good deeds, decreases with bad deeds, negated by anything, kufr, shirk, or, uh, uh, or nifaq akbar. Not by kufr asgar, and not by shirk asgar, uh, not by kufr, uh, kufr asgar, or shirk asgar. Now, the murjiya fuqaha, those are the murjiya gulat, which you need to understand who they are. The murjiya fuqaha is where the main problem is, which we need to, uh, under, which we need to understand. And they are known as the Ashanis, founded by Ibn, ha Ibn Hassan, uh, uh, come on, his name Hassan al-Ashari. Abu Hassan al-Ashari. Uh, I'm always confused between him and about the Rudis. Uh, these are the Murjiya Fuqaha, but they're not the Murjiya Fuqaha, meaning uh, some juristic understanding of... Uh, uh, of uh, uh, of uh, the Murjiya. These are known as the juristic Murjiya, Murjiya al-Fuqaha. And they believe that Iman is belief sayings, but they say that the action is not a pillar, but they say the action is a kamal of the Iman. I mentioned this last time, I believe, as well, yeah? So they say that the action can be part of Iman, and if it's part of Iman, it perfects the Iman. But Iman, it can still be saying an action. Abu Hassan al-Ashli himself, however, he changed before he died, but he, he, he changed, he renounced this Aqidah, but his students, they carried on. Another example of people who followed a similar kind of belief like this is uh, the Matrudis. Matrudis, they're like found in the Asian subcontinent. Nowadays, the best example of them are like the Hanafis and the Diobandis. And what they do is, they claim that they follow Imam Abu Hanifa. They attribute a statement of Imam Abu Hanifa where he said that action is a binding condition. Yeah, action is a binding con condition, uh, whereas... That is not the case. You cannot attribute that statement to Imam Abu Hanifa and then start to say, Iman is just saying and belief, but not action. You're trying to say Imam Abu Hanifa is murji. No, he is the one who said, the one who wear, helps the Christian wear a belt around his waist, who goes to the church, yeah? He becomes a kafir. The one who gives an Easter egg to, or an egg to the Zoroastrians, he becomes a kafir. So, and what is that action when you're putting a belt? Is it a saying or is it action? It's an action. So if he said that, 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 that action is only a condition, shad kamal, because that's how the uh, shahidah they like to uh, describe the iman. They say iman, the action is shad kamal, shad kamal, meaning if you have the action, it's nice. But if you don't have any actions, then that is not the case. Uh, whereas we understand uh, that there's uh, different types of conditions, uh, those which are binding and those which are recommended, like the sal salah I mentioned to you, uh, has condition has condition that you have wudu. If you don't have that, then there is no salah. And that is also like a pillar as well. Now, although the Jahmiyyah they finished, although the Jahmiyyah they finished, 
It becomes easy for people to follow them nowadays because people they say Iman is inside their heart. Iman is inside their heart. And this type of corrupted uh, understanding nowadays uh, of those mudjiyah fuqaha we find is given birth uh, to a complete destruction of the deen. This type of understanding that action is not part of the iman or you cannot judge a person's action or it's just action just perfects the iman or if the action is kufr or shirk doesn't matter we only judge by the inner why because the iman is just belief and action belief and saying and action is just a perfection of that iman that has led to a huge number of crimes number one for example the kufar to control our lands number two for the apostate rulers for uh, puppet scholars uh, nowadays who say the king is Muslim just because he says la ilaha even though all of his actions they completely contradict the deen this is a huge problem for us so you can see when people it comes to the rulers nowadays those scholars when it comes to the rulers they start to become jahmiya jahmiya they say iman is inside the heart so they say even though he done the kufr and shit by the action not until he testifies by his tongue what, uh, and tells us what he believes inside his heart meaning whether it's jahud whether it's istihlal he is a mu'min yeah and then when they can't prove what's inside his heart, in the first place, forget the saying now, if they can't prove what's inside his heart, what did they become like that next? The Karamiya. So that's how those Murjiya today, those Talafis, they are like. They're in between the Jahmiya and the Karamiya. First they'll say you don't know what's inside his heart. When you can't prove what's inside his heart, they'll say he needs to say by his tongue. Why? Because the Karamiya, where do they believe that Iman is? On the same. You see? That's not to say that they are the Jahmi or the Karamiya, but this is how people, they start to uh, behave nowadays. What are the consequences of al irja Just to explain that, uh, uh, just briefly. First of all, the consequences, is, the consequences of al irja is that the actions would be completely destroyed. Yeah? The actions would be completely destroyed. Because if actions are not a part of Iman, you can do whatever you want. You want nightclub? You got nightclub. You want to go drinking? You can go drinking. You want girlfriend? You can have girlfriend. You can do whatever you want. Why? Because the actions are no longer part of the Iman. Secondly, any akam, which means ibtila, uh, uh, that would be become disgraced. What does that mean? Meaning any action, which means I'm going to face ibtila, meaning some test from Allah, people will start to say, Aki, why do you want to do that uh, thing for? Why do you want to go and speak against the ruler for? Why do you want to go and remove the occupation from the Muslim lands? Aki, where's the benefit in this? Yeah? Or you're going to bring harm with a hikmah in this. Why? Because they don't understand that that action is ibadah. So this irja or delay or separating something from iman has huge implications. Third point is that people, they will say and do kufr. Because what does it matter then after that? If, I, if you can't judge me by my saying or my action, uh, or by my action, and if everything is dependent upon the heart, I can say and do whatever I want. Yeah? I can say all of the kufr under the sun. Number four, that the irja it serves the interests of the kufar and the coconut Muslims. You can add that one in there, yeah? To write that on your paper. The interests of the kufar and the coconuts, yeah? Why? Because what's the obstacle for the fasik? The obstacle for the fasik who wants to drink and wants to smoke is you the muhid. You the da'i, you the mujahid, you the one who wants to instill the sharia, you the one who wants to call for a revival for Islam. He doesn't want uh, places like Afghanistan to have sharia. He wants nightclub, he wants to have Bollywood, Hollywood, he wants to have all of that type of culture. That's why people, they say, they complain. If you go, if you, we had so many demonstrations recently calling for sharia inside the Muslim lands. People who are supposed to be from that country start demonstrating against us. They said, you people are going to take us backward. We want secular democracy. We want freedom. What kind of freedom do you want? The freedom of America? You want freedom of Britain? What kind of freedom do you want? How come you don't want Islam? And for the kafir, it's in his, best, in, in his vested interest as well. If action is not part of Iman, meaning you don't have the Sharia, you don't have Islam, then uh, for him that serves his vested interest because he doesn't want the return of the Sharia. And it's in the interest of the kafir for us to have this British version of Islam. Where it doesn't matter what you say or do. You give an oath of allegiance to the Queen. You join the British Army. You become policeman. You join the MI5. Why is it a problem with all of these things? Because those are actions which negate our Iman. Nothing to do with belief matter now. I can believe inside my heart, I hate it all day long. But what do I say by my tongue? You see? The oath of allegiance, I asked my brother once. When we asked the number of Shayyuk. What do you say about this? You know, the wording of the oath of allegiance said, I do solemnly swear, and they say, by my God, and then in brackets on the form it says, by your deity, and you bring your own book if you want as well. 
Yeah? So you mention your own God. So you say, by Allah, that I will give oath of allegiance to the Queen. That I will uphold her. I will uphold her laws. And I will defend them. And I will fight for them. And I will kill, I will kill for them. Or whatever it is. Yeah? I will be prepared to die for them. Now someone, Buddhist, you know what? He will read that and he will say, well, it doesn't matter. I hate it from the heart. No, no, no. We are, listen, no, we don't care. You can, you can hate it from the heart. Yeah? Someone he could hate Musaylamah all day long as well. Somebody he could hate uh, the fact that, you know, he was, he was doing whatever XYZ action it was. Still, we have the examples of Rasulullah, how even in his own uncle, Abbas, how he treated him as a kafir. How in the middle of the battlefield, he, he held him as a captive of war. You see? Even though he had embraced Islam. He had embraced Islam and he was uh, just found amongst the army of the Quraysh. Still, he was treated as a kafir. Afterwards, obviously, he repented. You see, so this type of uh, British Islam, uh, which people they want us to have, this serves the interests uh, of the kuffar by, by this irja. Number five, that you will worship Allah with hope, not fear and love. Because the ibadah, to be complete, you worship Allah with love, fear and hope. Love, meaning your love of Allah, hope in His mercy and fear from His punishment. The one who has irja, he's always in a state of hope. When you meet someone now, for example, yeah, and you say to him, Yaki, why don't you come to the mosque? Why don't you fast, fast in the month of Ramadan? Yaki, you know, my iman is low. Oh, I already just told you, iman increases and decreases. So why don't you fast then? Maybe your iman increase. You know what he's going to turn around and say to you? Allah like Ghafoolah Rahim. So how does he worship Allah? With hope. But if he really worshipped Allah purely with the love and the fear, then he would rush towards that good deed. That's how you know whether you're close to Allah. If you want to know, how is my relationship with Allah? How close am I with Allah? Ask yourself, when you worship Allah, do you do it with hope? Do you do, do it or do you do it just out of love? If you do it just out of love, who do you become like? Like Christians. If you just do it out of uh, 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 hope, then who, do you do it, then who do you behave like? Like the Jews. Yeah, yeah we hope. Don't worry, it'll happen one day. It doesn't matter, we can carry on doing whatever you want. Yeah? And if you do it out of fear, who do you worship, worship Allah, Allah like? Like the Hawarij. Or another example is, if you worship just Allah out of love, who do you behave like? Like the Sufis. And if you just worship Allah out of hope, like the Mujia. If you just worship Allah out of fear, you behave like the Hawarij. If you want to behave like Ahl Sunnah al Jamaah, love, hope and fear. The Sahaba, they had hope in the mercy of Allah. And, but they had fear of Him as well. Yeah, they had fear of Him as well. And they loved Him as well. That's why they used to rush towards the good deeds. That's why Abu Bakr al-Sadiq, he was always one step ahead of Umar sometimes in the good deeds. You see, there's a famous incident about this, you know, it's another story altogether, we'll discuss it another time, yeah? But that's number five. Number six, the shirk it will become halal. What? Yeah, actions is not a part of your iman, we can start to do shirk. And honestly, I met someone, forget the shirk now, I met somebody out and he said, look, I want to go and get a mortgage. I said, look, you know, the least amount of riba, to deal with riba, is like sleeping with your mother in the belly of the Kaaba. That's the hadith of Rasulullah, to deal with riba, with interest. But what are we supposed to do? What, wait a minute, what do you mean, what are we supposed to do? So I just told you the hadith, yeah? And where does this, what we're supposed to do? You see how people's psyche it works nowadays. It's like, I know that's haram, but how can I get around it and do the haram anyway, yeah? It's like, don't you, like, fear Allah. You know what I mean? You say to someone, like, it like, doesn't mean anything to him nowadays, yeah? So, this person, I said to him, I go, look, there's no way around it. This whole Islamic bank of Britain, it's not Islamic bank of riba, you might as well call it, yeah? Why, did it, why is it halal? For something to be halal, they said it's a fatwa. A fatwa has been issued that this mortgage is allowed. So then before that, fatwa is when there's a hukum shari, is not clear cut. Meaning before it must have been haram. What made it halal then in the first place? If you're saying, no, 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 it's never, never been haram. It's just, you know, they just took the, the no, no, no. What they done was, they changed the name of it. And instead to call it interest, they just call it fee. Yeah? More than a third party contract. They're not allowed to have three third party contract at all within Islam. Another topic altogether. Yeah? Anyway, after banging my head against the brick wall with this guy, you know what the guy said to me? He said, no, I've got a solution for all of this, yeah? The solution is, I pick up kafir for one day. And then I do the haram, and then the next day I take shahada. I said, I never thought about things like that. Mashallah, you become shaykh on Islam. Why don't I think about that? I'll, I'll do that all day long as well. And all the haram, all of the kufr, all of the shaykh, next day take shahada. I said, what day are you planning on doing it? And I think, I thought, well, maybe Friday, you know, that's my day of work. I said, not bad, you can go to the nightclub as well, you can have a girlfriend, whatever. But just remember, Mukhar and Nakeed, they might come to you at any time. Angel of death, Malik al Moth might come to you at any time, and you'll be inside the grave. And then on the last need that you die, Allah can account you for that. 
He said, yeah, actually, yeah, I think about that. Let me go and speak to another sheikh. I said, God, speak to whoever sheikh you want, yeah? You're back in head all day long, yeah? He's on Islam channel, DIY, DIY. It could be completely crazy. But this issue about the shit, it starts to become... I still chose this one in a specific example because this is what people do today. What is the biggest fitna in this country in which people, they bang their heads around debate all day long? God, you take a guess. Well, Happens voting. every four years. Voting. Voting. Elections. Yeah, good one, yeah? Not the halal meat. Even the halal meat, people are saying KFC is halal. Just say Bismillah. Because the colonel's got a moustache, a beard, a lahia. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that one, yeah? The colonel's got a lahia. Yeah, I said, but he's got a moustache. He hasn't trimmed it. You know what I mean? He said, no, no, no. This one is a brain I said, oh, okay. <laughs> colonel is brain I don't understand that one, yeah? What do people, they say, they say, look, we say that, look, voting is not, what is the process of voting? Voting is to choose somebody or who's going to work on your behalf, who's going to go inside the parliament and legislate law and order. And you say Allah is Al-Hakam Al-Adl. He's the only one who has the right to legislate. So you're directing an attribute of Allah to man. That is shirk. If I say to you, for example, now, Allah the provider and David Cameron, what do you call me? Bushrik. Sh shirk. You didn't judge by my heart, you judge by my saying. What do they say? They say the argument is, even number one, you can just hate it from the heart, which is completely wrong. You can't just hate it from the heart. Yeah? Or they'll say, voting is the lesser of two evils. What's, what do they mean by lesser of the two evils? They say, look, we got conservative, Labour, the gay party and the lesbian party, yeah? Because I can't remember what those ones are, so I just make them up. And then you've got the BNP. Ooh, the BNP, they're so strong and so big. The BNP, they go and beat everybody up. If the BNP, they come into power, they will beat us up, kick us out, and chuck us out of the country. Okay? By your own analogy, what is the lesser of the two evils? For you to become mushrik or to be beaten up? What is it? To be beaten up. You'd rather get beaten up than become kafir. Mm -hmm. So by your own analogy, we should not vote and let the BNP come into power. How does that sound? And in the first place, BNP... I would love the BNP to come into power. BNP said for everybody who... Uh, for, when they come into power, they'll pay everybody five to ten grand to leave the country. I haven't even got five grand in my bank account. You want to give me five grand to leave? I'll leave. I'll leave two and a half grand I'll do it for. You know what I mean, yeah? They'll let us go to Afghanistan. They'll let us go back to our own countries. But MI5 won't even let you go back to your own country. What are you talking about? They'll stop you at the airport. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> the Americans, over, they've got their bases over there. They won't let you go back. To, all the Muslims go back, go back to their own countries. And more than that, we got it on record. We judge by the apparent, even though Kafir is a liar. Mr. That porky pig, what's his name from the BNB? Nick Griffin. Mm. Like? Yeah. Arr. Yeah? Don't. Nick Griffin, he had a debate with Abu Hamza. And they said to him, it's a, after the debate, someone said to him, you're racist, to Nick Griffin. He said, how can I be racist? He goes, a lot of Pakistanis, they accuse me of being racist. But for your information, somebody from Meepur, <laughs> in this country from Meepur, rang me up the other day, he said, oi, white, honky, you know, B, yeah? Like the illegitimate, uh, you know, uh, son, they call it a bastard, basically, yeah? Yeah, so obviously, he, most go far, they are bastards, by the way, yeah? Because they're illegitimate sons, yeah? So they say, oi, bastard, yeah, basically, yeah? Well, he says, talk about you're going to send us back to our, uh, send us back to our own country. Nick Griffin, he explained it very well. Sheikh Nick Griffin, he said, yes, we will let you go back to your own country, but guess what? We will open up routes, uh, uh, trade routes for you. You'll still be able to trade with Britain. That's wicked, that is. We take all of the economy, bleed it dry, take all of the benefits, take everything out of the banking, close all our curry houses, go back to Mirpur and then say, hey, buy our curry. And you want to pay a tax as well, on top of it as well. Charge them double the price. Isn't that, bad? Isn't that good? That's something good. By your own analogy, you should not be uh, voting. But let's say, use the example now. Let's, let me make an analogy now, yeah? About this whole issue about lesser of the two evils now. Here we are talking about shirk. I'm going to give you two, uh, two, uh, two examples which are less than shirk. It's been scientifically proven, brothers, that masturbation leads to blindness. Yeah? So by the lesser of the two evils, which is better to do? To go and kiss a girl and to make fornication or to masturbate? According to that, masturbate. No. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
God is the one who gives life and takes life. So why can't we do that, Ya Sheikh? Ya Akhi, this is Ataki La, fear Allah. What do you mean fear Allah? You're the one who said on the other day on Islam channel that voting is allowed. You're the one who even said it's wajib as well to vote as well. Okay, let me give you another analogy as well. <coughs> There's a gang, Nigerians. Pick on the Nigerians. They've taken over North Easy and South Easy and West London and East London as well, both E3 and E1. All right, they've taken over all our areas and they've given us a choice. You've got to choose the lesser of the two evils. Two pips, they're going to come into power, but both of them are going to have prostitutes. Which one are we going to choose? The Pakistani one or the Christian one? Where is the lesser of the two evils in this one? No lesser of the two evils. What they, which one is evil? Both of them. So when you talk about this one, we either will vote for conservative or we vote for labor or we vote for BMP. Which is the lesser of the two evils? None of them. All of them, they are shirk akbar. What's the, the lesser of the two evils? Is no evil. Don't vote, you stay wahid. Vote today, become kafir tomorrow. That's the best way to put it. But those, but they go further as well. Because they say, they say, the first of all, they say, look, that we are under duress. We are under ikra. Ala adin al Bukhari, he made condition for this issue of duress. He said, for someone to say that he is under duress, the harm must reach this person first. Don't make hypothetical uh, 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 equation in your mind. If they come into power, they might come into power tomorrow. First of all, if none of the Muslims they voted, Britain is a very multicultural society. BNP are not going to come in power. By your own analogy, they're not going to, by your own understanding of politics and how they work, but according to the Kufar newspapers, BNP are not going to come into power. They only have a stronghold of maybe one council in the, in the entire country. How are they going to come into power? So by, your, by that analogy, they're not even going to come into power. And more than that, first of all, the Ikra, it doesn't exist. You're not under duress. Because uh, Al-Bukhari, he said that the duress, it must be present. Meaning it must be realist realistic that they're able to carry it out. And there's some conditions for the compulsion Ikra. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, he said the conditions of compulsion, there are four. If you write these down, it'll be very useful for you. Number one, that the person committing that particular duress to you, he must be able to implement the oppression or evil. Yeah? So, are the BMP able to implement that particular oppression upon you? No, he's not even in power. You're talking about hypothetically, if, if I don't vote, then he may come, in, may come into power. Number two, the one under duress can't repel it even by fleeing. So meaning, even if the BMP, yeah, the one under duress can't repel it even by fleeing. So the one under duress, he can't get rid of it even if he ran away, meaning he's got you captive. BMP never said to you if they come into power that they're going to capture you and they're going to kill you and they're going to beat you up. They simply said they're going to pay you to leave. What kind of duress is that? That's a favor. It's not duress. God says, take the off. Ya Allah, get BMP in power. You know what I mean, yeah? Third one is that the threat, threat it must be immediate. The threat, it must be immediate. Number four, it, the one, if the one threatening you says, look, if, if you don't say kufr, for example, tomorrow I will beat you, then that is not under duress. If the person who's threatening you says, if you, say this, if you don't say this word of kufr, then tomorrow I will beat you, that is not duress. So all you want to understand is the duress, it must be present, the person must have the capability, and it is inevitable that he's going to do it now. Don't tell me you're under duress now, when no one's even in power. When the person's in power, then you can think about what to do about it. And even then, we don't use shit to repel the, du the duress from our shoulders. You see? We don't want to do that. You see? So there's no way, by the whole understanding of the fickle waqi, of the reality, if you just understand the reality of the elections and the consequence of the BMP to come in power, but a BMP, when they come into power, doesn't make a difference to me. If they don't come into power, no problem. If they come into power, mashallah. That's what it is. Say takbir and Allah Akbar. So that is one example I just wanted to use, that by this irijab, by separating the action from iman, tomorrow you can do shit, tomorrow you can do kufr, all of that become allowed. Why? Aki is in the heart. Allah knows what's my intention. And you know the most evil thing about this is, is that they also say, one minute they say, we're under duress. Then on a the second argument, you know what they say? Aki, we can take interest and benefit in this as well. MashaAllah. How'd that become uh, allowed as well? So someone's putting a gun to your head and saying, eat pork. And you say, yeah, I'll eat pork. This one's very tasty. <laughs> this one's tasty. We have kebab out this. How'd that become allowed? Interest and benefit as agreed upon by all of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah is only in the area of Mubah. 
So what's mobile now? Which food is mobile for us to eat? Give me an example. Potato. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. Yeah? We can have as many potatoes as you want. You want ten? You can have twenty. You can have three. I'll have one. I'm on a diet. Yeah? We can have as many potatoes as we want. That's more about issue. But where is the maslaha, the interest and the benefit in shik? Under, either you're in duress or not under duress. Make up your mind. Because no, what he wants is he wants money. That's what it is. He's saying, no, we can get something out of it. Say, bol na fegal in it. Chuti bol na in it. You're lying to the people and telling them we're under duress, but at the same time you're saying we can get an extension built on the mosque. I thought you were worried that they're going to kill you. So which one is it? They want to mix both of them. So both of the principles, they take it completely out of context and apply it to a complete different reality which does not exist. There's no duress and there's no way you can get interest and benefit by voting for the man-made law. So I know that's a whole other topic, but that was number point number six. Number seven, you can become minister for the Tahut. What? What is Irja got to do with becoming minister for the Tahut, meaning Mufti of the Tahut? Remember, Tahut is anything followed the bait of worship instead of Allah. Could be man, could be rock, could be jinn, could be law order, could be the king, King Abdullah, King Abdullah. If that is a Tahut now, how can I become minister for him? Why? He manages it just inside the heart. Yaki, for by my tongue, I say one thing, but I mean something else within my heart. He becomes some type of monafic. What kind of hypocrite are you? What kind of Muslim are you? By your heart you say, I believe in Allah, I believe in His legislation. And you're meant to be scholar, Sheikh al Islam, you're meant to have all of the ilm, because we're Jahil, you're the Sheikh al Islam, yeah, and then you become a member of the permanent, uh, permanent committee of scholars. Hayat al Kabar al Ulama, working for Uli Amr, when it should be the Uli Hamr, not the king, uh, not, not the king, king of the land, it should be the leader of the Hamr, of the alcohol and the donkeys. You see? So if you, if you don't, uh, the consequence of the irja is that you become a minister for the tahut as you don't reject the tahut on the tongue and on the limbs. Number eight, you will, uh, you will never rise against the ruler who rules by other than what Allah has revealed because only, uh, uh, it's only a kufr action and not belief and that eliminates, this eliminates the methodology to change him by rising against him, uh, the rising against him uh, with the sword. So those were the consequences of al irja Okay, now, how are the Murjiyah in error when it comes to the Iman? Or with, with regards to the Iman? They refer to Iman as something known as Tazdiq bin Qalbi. I'll write this down in the word. So you get the correct wording. Tazdiq, tazdiq bin Qalbi. Oh. I think I need some more. Tazdiq bin Qalbi. This is what they refer to Iman as. Uh, and that is affirming something by. Uh, now I've got a cup. I've got a cup here. They affirm it by a belief in the heart. But they don't mean belief in the heart how we understand belief inside the heart, meaning have to have hidayah and conviction. They believe it only in the linguistic sense. Imam Shafi, when he explained Iman, Imam Shafi, he said to Zakhla, like Imam Shafi, he explained Iman as Ismun Shari, as a divine vow, vow noun. Ismun Shari, meaning the totality of the sayings and actions that you believe in. Yeah? He said Iman, it is sayings and actions that you believe in. So when he described Iman, he described it as a single unit, which has three components, which is saying, action, and belief. What the Murjiya they do, they refer to the linguistic understanding of Iman, uh, uh, without to refer to Iman in its totality. Uh, so, for example, what's a good English translation? You know, a proper English translation for Iman in English. Give it to me. Faith. Faith. Good. That's the word I was looking for. You got it right. Faith. So, when somebody, when you say, when, how does, when you say to somebody, to a Christian, have faith, or when a Christian says to you, have faith, where does he understand that Iman to be? Mm. Exactly. That is the understanding of the Murjiya. That is the linguistic understanding of uh, Iman for them. That is where they make the mistake. Why? Because they refer to Iman as Safiq Tazdiq Bil Qalbi. Just to say affirm or I trust in it. Which is completely wrong and it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. For example, let's give you another word. Zakah. Zakah, it means in Arabic, in Arabic linguistic understanding means investment. 
But zakah in the Sharia has a completely different meaning. It has particular nisa, it has particular conditions. When I say zakat, you, what do you understand? Zakat is in the money that you take, which is which is owed to maybe the poor, the weak, and the needy, or maybe zakat al fitr, or whether it's the zakat al mal from the fasting in the month of Ramadan, zakat al fitr. You give that, which is obliged upon you to give. So you understand in a completely different sense. Uh, whereas they refer to it as something completely different. Kitab al Iman of Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Iman is a is, is a shari'i name. It is a shari'i name, meaning is a name within the Sharia used by the legislator to indicate a particular thing. It combines the totality of the sayings, the actions, and the conviction. So, when we say say action and belief, you know what we were doing? We were simply elaborating. We were explaining it, and there's no problem with that. But don't start to classify Iman uh, as saying action and belief as separate because that's where the Irja will creep in. This is where the Murizya Fuqaha, they made a mistake. They say action is Shad Kamal of Iman. So if you want to, all you want to understand is Iman is one unit and it consists of saying that is Iman. Yeah? The saying an action and belief it is one unit. If you want to classify, if you want to elaborate, no problem. This is the saying, this is the action, this is the belief. But if you want to classify it, this is completely wrong. For example, Tawheed. Tawheed is what? One or two? One. When we say Tawheed, Wahidullah, what do we mean? One God. Yeah? We worship one God. But if we want to classify Tawheed, what do we call them? We say Tawheed al Bubiya, Tawheed al Uluhiya, Tawheed al Asma Sifat. Is that wrong or is that right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. That's simply elaboration and, uh, and, and to make classification, no problem. But if I start to say now, for example, there's only something called Tawheed al Bubiya. And if you if you got Tawheed al Rububiyya, that's enough for you to become a Muslim. Is that correct? No. If I say you only believe in Tawheed al Asma Sifat, is that correct? No. But if I say Tawheed al Rububiyya and Uluhi and Tawheed al Asma Sifat, that is Tawheed, that is correct. So I can make classification and I can make elaboration just for the uh, for the reason of explaining it. That's not a problem. But when you start to classify Iman and start to make it all separate ty types of divisions and start to say one is Shatta Kamal, that is where the Ashaira and the Maturudiya, the Murjiya Fuqaha, that is where they make the mistake. Forget the Murjiya Gulat. We're not concerned with them. Murjiya Gulat, they went outside the fold of Islam a long time ago. In the year 4th Hijri, they went outside the fold of Islam. But as far as we're concerned, that is how we understand the Iman. And Imam Shafi, he said in Kitab al -Ilm, in Kitab al-Ilm, he said, Iman it is a Sharia term that indicates sayings, actions, and conviction. Saying, action, and conviction. And more than that, one last hadith in regards to this, hadith in Sahih Muslim, reported by Abu Huraira, that Rasulullah he said, Iman it has 70 odd some branches. The highest of them is to say, La ilaha, and the lowest of them is to remove something harmful from the road, and Hayya, shyness, is a part of Iman. Very famous hadith. I'm sure you've heard it a million times, now you hear it a million and one times. But here we can understand that Iman, it has particular levels. No problem to uh, elaborate. So what did this hadith, what did Rasulullah do in this particular hadith? He elaborated. Elaboration of Iman. That Iman, it can have different levels. Some of them are, are small, some of them are big. Not a problem. But did he say, Iman is just shyness. Did he say Iman, the, the, the shyness is separate from, from the uh, Iman? No, he said Iman has 60 or 70 odd branches. So that is what you need to understand. Because I don't want you to make them, this mistake now, that we get evidences for saying actions and belief and start to make the separation. Otherwise you fall into the mistake of the Ashaira. Now, there's one matter which I need to explain to you with regards to Irja. And how this is a problem nowadays. Some issues of Irijah with regards to judging someone's kufr nowadays. Whenever the Ahl Bidah and the Ahl Hawa, the people of innovation and the people of desires. And when I say Ahl Hawa, this is a term, you know, which is so abused, honestly, yeah. Because people they say, this man he is smoking, he is Ahl Hawa. He swore he's Ahl Hawa. Someone who swore, we don't call him Ahl Hawa, yeah, we say this man is Ahl Fisak. Yeah, Ahl Fisak or Wal Maasi, the man of sin. But whenever the Salaf Saleh, whenever they used to refer to Ahl Hawa, who would they refer to? The people of Rashin, people of the mind, people who refer to their brain. Yeah, so the Mutazila, they use their Rashin to explain the text. So Ahl Bidda Wal Hawa, when they speak about, uh, uh, speak about terms, they always uh, describe it as something known as Al Lathul Mujmal. Mujmal. Al Lathul Mujmal, which is known as an abstract term. An abstract term, 
Uh, and what they do nowadays with regards to this area of Kufr, especially in the area of Kufr, is they say there is something called Kufr Ittikadi and Kufr Amadi. Kufr say or Kufr action and Kufr uh, belief. And this is completely wrong. If you want to uh, elaborate and explain what is Kufr Amali and Kufr Ittikadi, no problem. We say Iman is, is free. But we also say the Kufr can occur in all three. For example, if I say, in my heart, I don't believe in Allah. What is that? Kufr Akbar or Kufr Dun or Kufr? If in my heart, I don't, Kufr? Akbar. Akbar. If I say by my tongue, I don't believe by, I don't believe in Allah. What is that? Kufr Akbar or Kufr Askar? Kufr Akbar. If I bow down to another idol, yeah, and I believe that is God, that is Kufr Akbar. So here we need to understand, Kufr, it can occur in any one of those three ways. Now what did I just do? All I simply done was I made elaboration on the issue of Kufr. There's no problem with that. But problem becomes today where some people, they start to say, we have Kufr Itikadi and Kufr Amali. And if the Kufr Amali is there, we cannot declare the person Kafir until the Kufr, uh, uh, kufr Itikadi is established. And this is completely mixing the haq with the batil uh, and uh, they, they're not, not making any elaboration whatsoever because what the Ahl Jidah they do is they mix their poison. They mix the poison of understanding uh, the, the particular terms and start to uh, use abstract terms without making any tafsil, without making any elaboration. Whereas when we talk about any terminology within Islam, it has two particular pillars which you need to be aware of. And these two pillars are known as... Musta'allah. These are two conditions for any particular term which we define within the Sharia. Oh, that was meant to be a one. That would be a one. That just looks like rubbish. Jami Mani and al shat al -mani. The first one is that it must combine all meanings related to the terms. That is a condition for any definition which we're going to give. It must combine all <coughs> meanings related to that particular term. Secondly, al shat al -mani, it means to restrict any strange meaning. So what becomes dangerous is when someone uses a term without any elaboration. And that's what's happened now. People start to use a term without any particular elaboration when it comes to kufr, and they start to put honey in a jar with poison. And what happens when you put honey and poison in a jar to, and give it to people? You poison them. Uh, whereas, when we look to the Salaf of Salih, and they spoke about kufr, did they talk about kufr akbar, uh, sorry, kufr itikadi and kufr amali? They never spoke about it like that. They only described kufr in two ways. You know how that is? Kufr akbar, what ask them? Simple as that. If I explain it, if I ask you now, now, if I ask you now, give me two, what is, what is shirk? Yeah, shirk is to associate partners with Allah. How, did, how can shirk be? Uh, give me, you, you, what will you say to me? Major and minor. Everybody, they understand that. But this is the new introduction which we find nowadays. They start to uh, use these type of terms, and more than that, they try to portray them as Salafi terms, as Salafi definitions. Whereas the Salaf of Saleh, they never had that. All the ulama of Sunnah, they used the term kufur dana kufur. And the Sahaba, they understood Kufr in the Qur'an as Kufr Akbar. Whenever Kufr is mentioned or Shirk is mentioned within the Qur'an, it is always Kufr Akbar unless we have something called a Karina. A Karina is known as a divine indication, not Karina Kapoor. Karina is a divine indication to explain to us that as a Kufr do not Kufr. And I'll give you another, one example of how definitions can be so misinterpreted and thrown out of the window. Being re reported in Sunan Abu Dawood. That one Sahabi, he said, I went with Banu Amr to the Nabi Muhammad. And they said, you are our Sayyid, our master. And Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, look, don't say that. Al-Sayyid is our Lord and he is above all of your descriptions and glory be to, to him. He is much more above than what you, uh, what you, did, what you uh, ascribe to me. Yeah? Uh, Allah is Al-Sayyid. Then they said, you are the greatest virtue. You are the greatest thing that ever happened to us. 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, say some of your sayings, I mean, say some things that you want to say, no problem, but don't let it entertain the shaitan. Meaning, understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say, I'm very good, I'm very nice, not a problem, yeah? But don't be excessive in that, the shaitan will become happy with you. So, what we understand is, from this hadith, is that he rejected any term that didn't fit the correct meaning. So the term, it must fit that particular meaning. So when we talk about kufr, your mind only goes to one area. Kufr akbar or kufr askar. Don't start to say now, yeah, he done kufr by the action, but, it's, but yeah, we know it's kufr akbar, but it's a kufr, uh, kufr amali. You start to completely mix all of the terms all together. And this is where people become confused. They study the books about nawakid al-Islam, about those things which take you outside the fold of Islam. And then afterwards when you say to them, look, this person done kufr, kufr akbar, according to your own books. Go and read the book of Tawheed by Salih al fawzan In there, when he speaks about kufr, shirk and nifaq, he explains it as akbar and askar. No, find me any book of the Salaf of Salih where they talk about kufr and shirk. Akbar and askar. Simple as that. It could have different branches. Kufr can occur in different ways. It could occur by rejecting, could be by mocking. But it, it, it can occur in different places as well. We said that Iman has a particular place. Kufr has a particular place as well. Say action and belief, but don't start to make this uh, separation between the two. So... Uh, this is what we need to understand uh, that, that people they start to play with the terms of Iman and Irja. Uh, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah, he dealt with the dispute among some fuqaha about some who used to say the Salah, leaving the Salah is Kufr Akbar, and uh, uh, others who said that the person is not a Kafir. And he said, You can't identify someone as a Kafir till you know what, what these terms, like, what, uh, like Iman, what they mean. Yeah, he said you can't identify someone as a kafir until you know what these terms like iman what they mean. Meaning, you need to understand the terms and the definitions clearly. If we understand the term iman clearly, we can understand the, t uh, the term kufr clear clearly as well. But this introduction is completely uh, rubbish. Uh, just on a side note, another statement of Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah. He said any word of kufr. This is a hammer. This is like I said, you know the lemon juice on the, on the chicken neck. You got the lemon juice coming now. Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah, he said, any word of kufr out of a person's own choice, he will become a kafir. And the same thing with, if, he does, if he does that with any of the branches of kufr, like mocking the Quran or bowing down to an idol, he will become a kafir. He did, wasn't just limiting, limiting it to those two things. He was just saying by example. He said, if any branch of iman disappears, then the rest of them, they will completely disappear. SubhanAllah. So where is the application of this? Because the mistakes that people, although we love them, and although they are good, and although they are no doubt muhaddif of this era, and they're very good collectors of hadith, but they, out of there, they, mis, they misunderstood what Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah was saying. They, they, because he explains particular terms, they started to elaborate. And because of that elaboration, they started to make mistakes. Started to introduce kufr ittiqadi, kufr amli. Now the king, he does kufr by the action. And what do they say? Condition like the karamiya, he must say by the by the by the say. If not, then he needs to be like the jahmiya. He needs to affirm by the heart. So until he doesn't tell us what's inside the heart, then we don't know. That is a complete. You know, like that's like a what can I say? That's like a license for the king to do whatever he wants. I can do whatever I want. I never said it by the tongue. Who in their right mind is going to go? If, if, if that, it's like a light. You know, you, you're giving it like a free green light. I can do whatever I want now, but I've got, an, I've got an, a, one way of getting around it as long as I never said it. You see that? And we're not concerned about the akam in relation to the akada. We already mentioned this, yeah? In relation to the akada, that's what I love to judge. But in this life, how are we going to judge somebody? You can't judge no one now. Why? Because you never looked inside the heart. And I can give you some quotations of one individual who's made these mistakes. And this is in one cassette known as cassette. Min, min uh, Manhaj al Khawarij by Sheikh Nasir al-Din al Albani. He said, if someone dies on the Tawheed without doing any of what uh, he was asked, excuse me, if someone dies on the Tawheed without doing any of what he, uh, what it wants from him, will he will he be takfir upon and thrown to the hellfire forever or not? He answered, the Salaf had separated between the Iman and one's action and made the action a com completation. Meaning something shat kamal for the iman who's uh, 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 for the iman, whereas none of the salaf they said this. You see, remember what I said about the murjiya fukaha? <coughs> what did the murjiya fukaha believe? The ashaida. They say what is action? Shat kamal. They say exactly what um, Sheikh uh, Nasr al Din al Albani, rahmahullah, we love him for the sake of Allah. But this is the mistake that he made by not understanding what Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah was speaking about. In another cassette, he said 
Sheikh Albani said, if a Muslim commits kufr in action without kufr in his belief, then he'll become a kafir without doubt. If a Muslim commits kufr in action, uh, with, with, uh, sorry, if a Muslim commits kufr in action with a kufr in his belief, then he'll become a kufr without doubt. But if he commits kufr in action without the kufr in belief, then he won't become a disbeliever because this, is, uh, this kufr is called kufr amali. Kufr of action and not kufr ittikadi. And this is the cassette al kufr uh, al kufr kufran by Sheikh Nasir al-Din al-Albani. So this is a mistake. And not just him, but those other people nowadays like Rabbi Ibn Hadi al-Madkali, they believe exactly the same thing. Another cassette of his, by the way, not calling Albani a murji, but definitely he had irja in this issue. He was mistaken in this issue. And obviously we ask Allah to forgive him. But this is, uh, I mean, but this is the problem which has been <coughs> manifested by all of those students or people like Albani. And all of those people who are, who, who, who are you know, at, the, at, the, at the epicenter of those tell for you nowadays. He said in the same cassette, to differ between the two kufrs, kufr amali and kufr ittiqadi, is to look at the heart. So if the heart is mu'min and the action is kufr, then the status in the heart overtakes the status in the action, which means he is a mu'min, which is completely uh, rubbish and completely not accepted whatsoever. So we classify we classify the kufr to occur in the area of iman. We classify the kufr to occur in the area of iman just to elaborate and explain to the people. So if you want to say that kufr can occur in the saying, I give examples, and in the, in the belief, and on, or, uh, and, uh, and on the limbs, not a problem. But don't start to separate it. Don't make a separation just to justify your irja and not to make takfir on the kufr akbar because iman, it can be negated on any, sing any single uh, area. The next topic which we need to study now is about the Khawarij. So we understand who are the Murjiyah now. So you understand what is the Murjiyah, what is the diff what's wrong with the Murjiyah, what did the, what what the Murjiyah uh, make the mistake in, in regards to Iman? They separate action from Iman. Yeah? And amongst them you've got two types of Murjiyah. Murjiyah Gula, extreme Murjiyah, who are Kafir, and Murjiyah Fuqaha. The irja on our time where people start to say the king he is mu'min even though he done kufr action this is stems from the ideas from the murjiya fuqaha from the ashaira and those matrudis where they say belief is saying action and belief but the action is shant kamal kamal meaning it completes the iman but if we don't have it you're still a mu'min so when it comes to the kufr and the manifestation of judging a person's action what do they say they do it the other way around they say well no he done kufr action but he's got belief inside the heart therefore he's a mu'min you see so although you read the books and they all say Iman is uh, saying action and belief and none of them would actually, even if you ask them then, hold on a minute, do you believe it is Shart Kamal? No. But when it comes to the manifestation of now judging someone's kufr, they start to have this irja. Wherever they make tawakkuf, wherever they stop and they don't make the takfir, another story all together. But now you can begin to understand why is it that people, they don't make takfir nowadays. Why are they so scared of making takfir? Why? Because people are completely confused. We go all the books talking about Muwakil al-Islam, but where is the manifestation of that? Go and ask some of those Saudi sheikhs nowadays. He gives you the whole negations of Iman. Now can you give me an example of somebody who become apostate in the last 12 months? No. How come? You're a sheikh. Surely you must meet people who commit kufr. Don't you watch the news? Don't you watch the TV? No, I just live inside the king's palace. No wonder that explains a lot to us, then, not it? Why you don't know anyone who's become kafir? What about somebody? Okay, look. So you said in the book, not read by you anyway, by Abdul Wahab, but you gave the shadow of it, the explanation of it. The one who joins the ally, allies with the kufar against the Muslims, he becomes kafir. My cousin, he joined the British army and he's going to go fight his side of Afghanistan and he's going to kill Muslims. And on top of that, he's going to give an oath to the Americans and say, God bless America. Yeah? And he wasn't saying, you know, La ilaha illallah. No, he said, God bless America. Is that kufar akbar or not? Yaqi is kufar amali, not kufar tagadi. It's complete rubbish. So this is where the irja occurs with those telling you nowadays. You see? And when you speak to them and you say to them, Yaqi, they'll say to you, Yaqi, you need to say to study the basics. Okay, what's the basics then? La ilaha illallah. What does la ilaha illallah mean? Meaning you need to make kufar on ta'ud. Hawz billah. Yaq, what's this? What? What's this? <laughs> yeah. How you make that feel? Yani, yak. We don't even know the basics. Yeah? I said, well, what's the, what's the basics then? <laughs> yak, you just study the, study, 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 study about it. The basics. Okay, well, what's the basics then? Okay, all right, okay, let me catch you out then, right? You know the hadith of Jibra'il alayhi salam when he came to the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the form of a man and he asked him the question, tell me about Islam, tell me about Iman. He said that Iman is to believe in Allah, believe in the angels. Okay, tell me the name of the 54th angel. 
I don't know the name of the 54th angel. <laughs> How you study the basics then, Yashi? Yani, yani, nam, nam, aki, aki. You don't know anything then, you see? You caught him out there, you see? Don't talk to me all about all this. Aki, aki, aki. What's this? We need to study the basics. Completely, they, you know, there's elaboration and separation. They go completely out the window. You say, Aki, king is gathered. Yaki, your trousers are not above the ankle. What's that got to do with that, though? Yeah, because he rules, but he allies with the Kufari, he invites the Americans inside the Holy Land. Yaki, your mustache is too long. It's going above your lip. Yaki, you don't have a book underneath your armpit. Subhanallah, you make bitta, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah? You make bitta, though, walking around with Kitab al underneath your armpit all day, though. No? You don't ever read it. You're just picking up all your sweat. That's your problem. You never study those books. But action is a part of humanity. That's why you see the mulaji in everything. They got so much irja and everything. Not just separation of action from iman. Even their books is not part of their iman. The books is not even part of their knowledge, their ilm. Why? Because they got the book underneath the armpit all day long. They say action is part of their iman. So I've got iman underneath my armpit. How about reading it and manifesting it? Read it and apply it. What's the point in reading all of these books? What's the point in studying all of this and afterwards we don't apply it to anything? We become like donkey kind of books. Not to displace a donkey. Donkey is walking. Donkey is doing good deed, but you become less than a donkey. Donkey, at least he's doing something good. He's carrying the books. He'll go to uh, wherever it is, Iraq or Afghanistan, and carry the books over there. But you just carry them underneath your armpit. <laughs> You're giving a bad name to the books. You give bad name to Sheikh Abdul Wahab. You know what I mean? Anyway, what can we say? That was a topic of al Ija and al The next topic which we're going to study is about the Khawarij. Ooh, the monsters. Yeah. So the monsters that come out to play about the Khawarij. Who are the Khawarij? So, Bismillah, being reported by Abu Sa'id al-Hidri. We explained this hadith, I'm not going to repeat it, but it's the hadith of when the man came uh, to uh, Rasulullah and he said, Ittaqillah. Yeah? Okay, I'm not going to mention that one. And that's reported in Bukhari and Muslim. In another hadith, Umar al-Qatar, he heard... Actually, no. So, no, this is... This is uh, the same incident which took place when a man said to uh, Rasulullah, Itaqillah. Umar al Faruqi heard about it and he went to the Prophet and he also asked permission to kill, kill this man as well. His Sahabi were like terrorists, honestly. Khalid bin Walid is saying, Let me take his head off, yeah? Umar is saying, Let me kill him as well, yeah? The bunch of killers, they just want to kill everybody, yeah? He said, Give me permission, I will kill him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he carried on with his. Uh, with, with his, with, with his uh, description He said when you see them pray You will look at him And think that they are better than you What was the first description? He said He said uh, From his lineage Will be children Who will be people Who recite the Quran very well They will never reach their throats And they will kill the Muslims uh, uh, And they will not fight the Muslims And they will leave the, the deen Like the way they uh, The way they uh, where the arrow leaves the bow. When Umar came along, Rasulullah repeated it and added a few more words to it. He said, when you see them pray, you will look to them and think that they are better than you. Proper. Yeah? Yeah? Proper. Salafi you. You know what I mean? Ah. Mm. Yeah. The glorious sound of Ain. Yeah? Damn. <laughs> like that. When you see them pray, you will look to him and think that, you think that he's better than you. And when they fast, you'll think they are better than you. You know what I mean? How is that the case? You're fasting, you're still smiling. This one, he looks like he's really... Like, man, how about been fasting 12 hours? Looks like this one, been fasting 6 months. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. And when they recite the, they will recite the, the Quran very well, they'll never reach their throats. Like who? Like that one from Mecca. So, so base. The man who gave the information, the, mujah, the names of the Mujahideen to the Saudi government. And they got arrested as a result of that. You see? The man who went and sat with Musharraf, the murderer, the terrorist. Musharraf Kutta Ahead, that one, yeah? The Musharraf inside Pakistan and led the prayer for the Pakistani army before they went and killed Muslims inside Afghanistan. And on top of that, sitting there making dua with Musharraf as well. You see? The one who came and opened up Masjid Darar. Whitechapel Mosque. We call it Masjid Darar because they got an award. Masjid Darar, Masjid of Hypocrites. Because this is a mosque which was given a, a, an award by the local counter-terrorism command. Said, you're doing a very good job in fighting terrorism. And these are the ones, they come out and condemn those brothers or whoever it is who speaks out against homosexuals and the gays just recently, the last couple of weeks. And they said, we completely support our gay brothers. We completely support those people within our community. We completely support their freedom. So how about you see how the deen become completely upside down? Remember the, 
hadith I mentioned at the very beginning of tonight, how people, they would, how the, the knots of Islam will be untied one by one. The first would be the ruling, the next would be the sabah, and after that, what's left in between? Gays become our brothers, Jews become our brothers, counter-terrorism command become mujahideen. SubhanAllah, <laughs> what more is there left after that? Rasulullah said the Quran they will never reach their throats, and they will leave the deen the way the, the arrow leaves the bow. Imam Ali, he said, I heard the messenger say, talking about the Khawarij, he said, there will be people whose recitation cannot be compared to anybody else. Yeah? Personally, I never liked Sudais, to be honest. I prefer Shatari. Shatari and Gandhi. Gandhi reminds me about Jihad. Shatari is very nice as well. I like him, yeah? But it's another one I like as well. I've forgotten his name now. He's a very good one. Who's Gandhi? I, Gandhi. Abolito uh, Gandhi. No, 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 no. The other Gandhi. That's, uh, that's, uh, Sadr Gandhi. Sadr Gandhi. It's very nice. Listen to that one. Listen to that one. It's very good. Shadi is good as well. My favorite one is Al Ajmi. That's the best. He's the man. Idris Al Have you heard of him? Yeah. He's very good as well. Very good as well. Yeah. Another one I like is Abu Hajar Al Iraqi. He's the best. That's the best one. He's the best. Yeah. And Uthman Ibn Abu Hamza. That's another good one as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mullah Omar. There's a couple of others as well. Yeah. Okay. He said there, uh, there will be people whose recitation cannot be compared to anyone else. It will be the best. And their salah cannot be compared to anybody else. Yeah? Their fasting cannot be compared to any, anyone else. They'll be the best. They're, they'll recite the Quran thinking that it's an evidence for them. Ya I got my dalil. But it'll be an evidence against them. My the 44. <laughs> and they will leave the deen the way the arrow leaves the bow. Their sign is that their leader will only have upper arms and, and the top of their arms are like a small nipple. They will have arms strong like the chest of women. This reminds me of some Talafis in Birmingham. Imam Ali, uh, incidentally, he was the one who killed 70,000 of the Khawarij in his time as the Khalifa. What's the roots of the Khawarij? Let's discuss the roots of the Khawarij. We already learned uh, from all of these incidents that the, the, the head of the Khawarij was who? Dul Khawaisari al Tamimi. Dul Khawaisari al Tamimi. And what we understand. From this incident where this man he came and he said Itaqillah to the Prophet is that the man was sincere. Yeah? The man he was sincere by saying Itaqillah. He didn't say it out of arrogance. We don't know. But far as we concerned, he's sincere. And the Khawarij generally, genuinely, uh, uh, they, they, they were, uh, they, they, uh, we, we understand that they were sincere. However, sincerity is not enough. You must have knowledge. You see? What they lacked in was knowledge. Imam Shahrastani, Imam Shahrastani, he said the Khawarij is anybody who has Kharuj, meaning he goes against or rebels or rises up against the rulers or the Sahaba. And the first Kharuj that, were, that took place was against Ali ibn Abu Talib, uh, and the, the one who done that was a Khadiji. Uh, and Ibn Hazm and Ibn Taymiyyah, he agreed, uh, they both agreed with this statement that the first Kharuj. The first rising against a Khalif was done by Imam by the by, by, by the by the Khawarij against Ali ibn Abu Talib. And how did this happen? There was the fitna which occurred between Ali and Muawiyah, who are both Sahabi. Now, you know when we talk about the Sahaba, we always praise them. We love the Sahaba. But the Sahaba they have particular fadai, particular virtue, and some are more closer to the Haq than others. So when we discuss the dispute of Ali ibn Abu Talib, we do not say Ali is correct and Muawiyah is wrong. No. Who says that? The Shia. Yeah. We say both were correct. However, Ali ibn Abu Talib was more closer to the Haq, particularly because of his virtue. You see? Likewise, when we talk about the Ashra Mubashirin, we talk about the top 10 Sahabi. Who's at the top of them? Abu Bakr as Sadiq. Then who's after that? Oh. Umar. Then Uthman. Then Ali ibn Abu Talib. Then those who come after them be listed as the top 10. Now, the fitna happened between Ali and Muawiyah after the death or the assassination, excuse me, of Uthman. Muawiyah, he said, I want to know who killed Uthman. Yeah? Because there was some relation, I believe, between the two. The cousins. They were cousins, yeah. They were cousins or he was his uncle or his nephew. I think it was his nephew. Huh? Yeah, I think it was his nephew. And he demanded immediate, like, sort of investigation. Yeah? And that resulted in a fitna occurring where two armies met to fight one another. The army of Muawiyah and Ali ibn Abu Talib. And there were 70,000 Muslims that came out. And Aisha, uh, Umar Mu'maneen, she came out as well, and they said that she was crying. 
And she, she described after, she said, I never cried as much as I cried during that particular incident. So those people who want to slander Umar al Mumani, they need to fear Allah. Now, before the, you know, in the midst of the battle, you know, before, you know, they clashed, Ali ibn Abu Talib, he held up the Quran uh, as a sign of al uh, that um, that we want to make arbitration to the Quran. So you see the love of the Sahaba. Even though they got a dispute amongst each other, but when it comes to the middle of the battlefield, one held up the Quran and both of them, they dropped their weapons. And they said, we're going to make the hakum, we're going to refer back to the Quran, and we're going to resolve our dispute. However, the descendants of Dhul Khwaisari, al, uh, Dhul, uh, Dhul uh, 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 he, they rejected that. They rejected that completely, and they started to gather together. Ali and Muawiyah, they stepped down, and they said, look, what we're going to do is we're going to resolve our dispute, and in between that time, we will appoint a new leader. We will appoint a new leader. The Khawarij, they rejected this. And they quoted Surah Yusuf, Surah 12, verse 40, in al hukmu illa lillah. The right of legislation is for none but Allah. So you can see from all what we're describing here now, it's so easy for somebody, Talafi, to read about the history of the, of the Khawarij and start to apply it to us. Because we believe the king is Gafir. We believe ruling by everything what Allah has revealed is Kufr Akbar. Yeah, but however, what Ali and Muawiyah did was not Kufr Akbar and not Kufr Askar. Not at all. What they done was absolutely correct. They got a party from one side, a party from another side, and they start to make arbitration. Why? Because the ayah said, if a husband and wife have a dispute, bring a party from one side, bring a party from another side, and make the hakum between the two. Oh my God, she's going to be here in 10 minutes. Okay, don't worry, it won't take long, yeah? The Quranists, they rejected and they went on a faraway hill. Uh, and they believed they had more ilm than Ali ibn Abu Talib, even though Rasulullah he described Ali ibn Abu Talib as a city of knowledge. And what they decided was, that's it, the blood of Ali and Muawiyah and those Sahaba, they become halal, we're going to kill them. And they said the nearest enemy, the Muslims, they have been, uh, they are apostate now, and it's better for them, uh, better to fight them than the Kuffar. And they claim that the apostates are the first to be killed. Yeah, they said the Murtadeen, they need to be killed uh, first, and they start to meet at one house. One of them, he said, it's not allowed for the one who believes in Ar-Rahman to refer to the man, to refer to a man instead of Allah. You must command the good and forbid, forbid the evil and change the munkar by force. Then they went out and they started to find those people who they considered to be kafir and kill them. The first to be killed was one Sahabi known as Abdullah ibn Khabbab, and he was the first mutilated shaheed in Islam in Mecca. Uh, his son, uh, his son Abdullah was captured by the Hawarij and they asked him who he was and, uh, uh, and Abdullah told them and the Hawarij they started to praise his father and they said yeah your father he was good you know mashallah like they say Aki who's your shit mashallah it's very good very good yeah and they, and, and they, and they said uh, did you go to the arbitration of Ali and Muawiyah and he said yes so, uh, and that, that they made takfir upon that yeah and then they called him kafir yeah then they asked him about hadith They asked him about hadith, uh, and uh, they asked him about a particular hadith, and he said, there will come a time uh, when sitting is better than standing. It's a long hadith, I don't have the full narration. Uh, and then they killed him, and they cut off his head, and they captured his wife, who was pregnant, and they uh, tied her up uh, to a date tree, uh, uh, they tied her up to a, 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 a date tree, uh, and a date dropped nearby her. Then they asked her, did you stay with Abdullah after the arbitration? She said, yeah. They said, you're kafir as a result of that. They killed her, they cut open her stomach and killed the baby. And they said, that is the punishment for apostasy. Then one man, he was walking by and he picked up the date that had fallen. And they killed him for that as well. And they said, eating of another's date without to pay for it, this is kufr akbar and takes you outside the fold of Islam. Then they went into a market and a pig touched the food. And they said, this is facade in the earth. Then they captured, captured and killed the owner of the pig. Now, after hearing this, Ali ibn Abu Talib, he said, I'm going to kill all of them. And he killed 6,000 of them in that battle. But he lost that battle at the end. Then after that, the Khawarij, they started to fight and kill the Sahaba. And Ali ibn Abu Talib, he went after them. But before that, before that, the people, they came to Ali ibn Abu Talib and said, These, uh, there are people who make haruj against you and they are coming to fight you. And he said, leave them. I will not fight them until they fight me. You see Ali ibn Abu Talib? Got some hikmah there. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he went to the Khawarij and he started to debate with them. Ah, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he's shrewd. He can smash anybody up in the debate. And uh, they said, are you going to discuss with us? They said, we heard you are a man of good ta'wil. Yeah, so they praised him. And they said, we want to ask you about three, three matters. 
they, they, they asked, what are you going to say about the one who refers to a man instead of Allah? Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, what's the use for a man when, we, when Allah's word is already risen? So they said, MashaAllah, good, now, now, very good Salafi. Then they asked about the arbitration of Ali and Muawiyah and about fighting them. Yeah, uh, and then they asked, if Imam Ali does not say he is Amir al-Mu'maneen, then does that mean he is Amir al-Kafirin? Ali, Ali, Ali ibn Abu Talib, he debated with them, uh, with the ayah from the Quran, and he argued that, look, if there's a dispute between two families, then you bring a member from one side, another from, from, from another side. And he quoted the ayah uh, uh, regarding uh, obliging, taking the booty when you fight them. So this one, it completely hammered them. Because now he said, you said you're going to go and fight Ali ibn Abu Talib and Muawiyah. Are you going to now capture Umm al muminin as Sabi in the battlefield? This one, it completely destroyed them now. You're talking about Umm al muminin now. You're going to take her as Sabi as booty because it's been obliged upon you to take booty within the battlefield. And he said, regarding your saying that if Imam Ali does not say he is Amir al-Mu'mineen, then that does not make him Amir al-Kafirin. And he reminded, reminded them that the Prophet, he took off his title of Rasulullah in the treaty, uh, of, uh, in the, in the treaty with the Kuffar, uh, even though he was a Rasulullah, and he refuted their arguments. After he done this, 2,000 uh, out of the 6,000 Khawarij, they left them and they went with Ali ibn Abu Talib. Then, however, battle it commenced, and then we learn about the assassination of Ali ibn Abu Talib. Three of the Khawarij, they gathered together in Mecca, conspiring to kill uh, three Sahaba. They were known as Ali ibn Abu Talib, Amru ibn al-As, and another Sahabi. Amru ibn al-As, he was one of the arbitrators. I can't remember on which side, whether it was Muawiyah or on the side of Ali ibn Abu Talib. They did succeed with two of those. They did succeed with Amru ibn al-As and the other one, but they did manage to uh, assassinate Ali ibn Abu Talib. All three of those assassins, for your information, were the descendants of Dhul Khwaisari al-Damimi. And one of the assassins, his name is Ibn Mulzim. Ibn Mulzim, he is one of the assassins, and he entered Mecca, and he was planning to kill Ali ibn Abu Talib. And he entered the masjid while Ali ibn Abu Talib was in his salah. And he struck Ali on his head with a sharp knife. And they said the head of Ali was open and bleeding very heavily. So it was a fatal, uh, f fatal wound. Then he demanded, after he stabbed Ali in the head, the man he started to run away. Ali ibn Abu Talib, he said, don't let him run away. There will be fitna like the fitna of Uthman. You see, even on the deathbed, yeah, he was concerned. Don't let there be any fitna on the earth. Try and find who this man was. Um, um Kuthum, she said, oh, enemy of Allah, how dare you kill Ali ibn Abu Talib? And he was captured. Uh, Abdullah ibn Jafar, he captured him. And you know what he did? When, you know what, they done, what, what the man done when they captured him? The man who started to make tawbah. Yeah? He said it was the duty of every Muslim to kill Ali ibn Abu Talib. And then he accused them of facade in the earth. And he said the punishment for those who cause facade in the earth is to be uh, uh, crucified or to have your hands and legs cut off on opposite sides. Anyway, they started to cut his hand, his legs, and then his eyes. And he still did not make tawbah. And then they were about to... Uh, and then they were about to cut his tongue. And you know what he said? He said, don't cut my tongue. I want my last words to be like that in the mouth. See, even on the, so what, how do they worship Allah? They worshiped Allah out of fear and out of hope. Yeah? But how, what they didn't have was knowledge. They did, what they didn't have was knowledge. And they said, when he died on his head, they not, noticed that he had a sign of sujood like no other person. So when it comes to ibadah, they were very, very tough, very, very strong, but they went on an extreme level like no other. There's many names for the Khawarij, uh, which uh, I'm going to give you. Um, actually, I don't think it's necessary, in fact, uh, to give you the names and all of the sex, because it's, uh, it's not really that relevant. I'll leave that. Let me just give you some of the samad, some of the signs of the Khawarij, because we're short on time. We've got about five minutes. Seven signs of the Khawarij, which you need to be aware of. You can write this down. Number one, they rise against the legitimate Muslim rulers. Yeah, they don't rise against the illegitimate Muslim rulers. To rise against the illegitimate rulers is good. Number two, they say anyone who differs with them is a kafir. Because they claim they are people of the Haq, and if you differ with the people of Haq, you are a kafir. They believe they are people of Haq, and if you differ with them, you become a kafir. Likewise, they say they are people of Iman. And if you differ with them, you become a kafir. Number four. One, two, three, four. Number five. They reject arbitration of any Muslim 
and uh, uh, even if it means to go to a Muslim judge, they reject tahakum to a Muslim judge. Next one is, they reject any sunnah unless it is supported by an ayah. Also, they shave their hair completely. Next one, they wear humble clothes and they attack other people who don't wear humble clothes. <laughs> Last one is they like to kill the people of Bidda. What are the signs of the Hawarij? Six signs of the Hawarij. Number one, they believe that Iman does not increase or decrease except by one piece. Either you have Islam or Kufr. And if you drop any part of Islam, meaning even if it's something, you know, uh, so something, you know, um, something small, you know, something recommended, then you become a kafir. If you do some physic, you become a kafir. If you do haram, you become a kafir. Number two, they believe that anybody who does a big sin, he is a kafir. Number three, they believe that anybody who commits a small sin and insists on it, they are a kafir. Number four, they believe that iman is one piece. It cannot be increased and decreased. If some of it is gone, then all of it is gone. Number five, they don't give any excuse of ignorancy. They believe that you do not need to be the khalif or you do not need the khilafah to implement the, to implement the hadood. You can implement it by yourself. Whereas we say we need the khalif and the khilafah to implement the hadood. And lastly, number seven is they worship Allah by fear. If you missed any of them, feel free to ask. Yeah, maybe maybe. So, in conclusion, what do we say? With regards to Iman, we understood how it is with Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. We say Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, they are in between the two sects, the Murijia and the Khawarij. Murijia, they believe Iman, they believe that Iman, uh, the, 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 the Iman is inside the heart. Where the Khawarij, they believe Iman it increases, but it doesn't decrease. But the Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, they are in between, they believe Islam it increases as well as decreases. That is all you want, what you want to understand. And you want to also want to understand about the negation of Iman in, in relation to the difference between the Khawarij and Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Next week we will discuss about the topic of Kufr. We will discuss the topic of Kufr and there was another topic as well. I can't remember now. There's a topic of Kufr. Where do, I'll, I'll let you know anyway when I figure it out. <laughs> Send my notes at home. So next week we'll carry on Nawabit uh, al-Takfir. After we discuss Kufr, we're going to discuss about the preventions of Takfir. I think we'll probably will start Kufr and preventions of Takfir next week. So those will be our two <coughs> sessions next week. If there's anything good I said, they will do Allah. If there's any mistakes, they were all but my own. I ask Allah to forgive you. We give you and then we benefit from all of our studies and be able to implement what we know uh, more than what we just uh, read and just what we write, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah wa sallam.